Hey, welcome in everybody to the latest edition of the Ghostly Take as we're here with our first player interview, a fan favorite down there in Lehigh at PPL Center, Wyatt Wiley, who is going to enter his magical number three. They always say three is the magic number. This is going to be your third season, Wyatt. But first and foremost, how are you doing this fine day? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, I think first, uh, I think it's all of us that cover you guys in media try to pick what type of player you are, try to give the three characteristics. The most important thing is, what the player actually thinks their main three characters are. So if you had to describe yourself as a player, what would you say your main three dynamite characteristics of your game were? Um, I'd probably say, you know, just my defensive game. Um, for one, breaking pucks out, I think that's a pretty good strong suit of mine. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, getting the big hit back for the pucks, getting them quick off my stick and, you know, out of the zone. And, um, you know, I pride myself on, you know, breaking pucks out. I mean, that's, that's pretty much, you know, what I focus on. And um, also uh, my shot from the point, I, uh, I work on getting shots through all the time after practice. I stay out late just, you know, cause that's a big part of uh, creating offense. Just like, not even for me, just, you know, for your forwards is getting the puck up to the net and then giving them a chance. And, uh, and then obviously my skating, uh, but you can always, you know, improve on skating no matter what. So that's something I definitely work on and, and I continue to work on every day. Yeah, and I would say that's pretty spot on with how most people, like when I talk to our good friend that's there sometimes, Russ Cohen, both of us see you as a very good defensive puck-moving defenseman. So that, that I think your uh, characterization is very much in line with everybody else's, where sometimes that's not always the case yeah. uh, on the two-way street there. But going off of that, I thought that would be a good start because – you have a very good uh, head coach known Dennis Williams, obviously from the WHLC you had, I should say, when you were with the silver tip. You started in 16, 17, went to 19, 20, and showed immense progression each year and made the playoffs three out of those four seasons. What can you say about, one, how much Dennis has really helped progress your game, and two, how playing for a team as good as the silver tip for the WHL, as good as that program, really kind of helped you, you and your game progress? Yeah, definitely. I mean – when Willie first came in, um, you know, to the silver tips, uh, you could just right away, you could tell, well, you know, what kind of, you know, he's, he's really, he's really into what he's doing and he loves it. And um, he's willing to make everybody better. So, um, you know, you can tell that right away. And, and then obviously, yeah, like just the way he coached, um, he, he was really strict, but he also allowed you to, you know, fit inside his system and do, and do what, what you could do, you know, and, and uh, he allowed, you know, a lot of, leeway but he also he, he would he didn't take a lot so he would yell at you if, if he didn't like what you were doing so I mean that really helped me obviously it just he was a great coach and um you know I, I had a lot of great teammates as well that goalies teammates other defensemen um just everything about it and um yeah he helped a lot so yeah and then when it comes to Dennis you talk about intensity but still being a player coach Lappy always talked about I remember he said in an interview to Bob about he never wants to be like kind of I, I can't remember the exact quote he said but never wants to be the general that's really overly strict otherwise he would just leave because that's not him how what are the similarities and some of the differences that Dennis Williams and uh Ian LaPerriere have that or that you really because Lappy I thought did in his first year did do a pretty darn good job at controlling you guys and letting you guys have what I thought was a very good player centric locker room so I don't know if you could speak to that also yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, in that sense, you know, they did obviously coming to the rink is always fun. And, and um, you know, they also allow you to, you know, go out there and, and be yourself and learn and, um, you know, grow as a player. So, um, yeah, in that sense, they, they were both really good at that. And, and they're really approachable, both of them. Um, if you got questions, if you got concerns, anything like that, you know, they, uh, they're they really good at, you know, making you feel comfortable asking those questions. So. Yeah, Lappy is always funny with us at the media too, because we're always crack a joke at. Um, is that your dog? I have a dog. Yeah, too. yeah, I have a dog. Yeah, too. sorry. No, that's fine. That's actually funny. I have a dog too. It should get loud. We don't have a yeah. storm today, but the other day doing a podcast, we had a rainstorm come through, and you just heard her barking profusely in the background while I was in the middle okay. of uh, doing something. So no, I completely understand that, but no, that yeah, makes sense because that. I think uh, intensity combined with just being a class act, like you said, Dennis uh, was, and then I know for a fact being around Ian Laperia, Ian Laperia is, I think that's yeah. a perfect combination for a hockey guy that's leading a team because you tend to see that in one, a lot of captains, and you tend to see that in a lot of head coaches because you have to be intense sometimes, but you can't be overly intense because that's never going to help exactly. you be yep. overly tamed 
because then you're not going to get enough out because you're not intentional. So there's always that perfect balance. And I think yeah. from what you described, it seems like both of them have that perfect balance. I'm, I'm really honestly excited to see with the young infusion from the prospects like Sami coming over to Mola and some of the other young guys you guys have coming in this year, how fun that's going to be uh, to implement this year because – I always thought Ian, and that's why he was uh, one of the guys that helped with the play development with the Flyers. His biggest strength was like with guys like you getting the finishing touches out of the young players' game so they would then be ready fully for the NHL, where he kind of did that with the NHL players. Now he gets to do it yep. in the minors with you guys. So I, I'm assuming you kind of agree with him having that as one of his main strengths. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, that was one thing coming in last year that, you know, he said he was he was going to do, and he, he obviously did that last year, um, was – working with the younger players and, you know, giving you his best effort um, to try and get you guys ready for whatever you needed to get ready for, for that next level. So. Yeah. And then uh, I would say, but with your game, with the Lehigh Valley fans, you had one season where well, your first season was 21 games you played. And that was also in that weird COVID odd season when we were there and we met you guys on zoom after the game, it was kind of odd, but still fun in terms yeah. of covering nonetheless. How did that season help you progress? Because I feel like I know some players from watching, I watch a lot of different player interviews on multiple to po multitudes of podcasts. A lot of them said it kind of, for some, made them get their game even tighter because you could do absolutely nothing else other than that. So was that kind of the case with you where you even had more time to focus on your game because you literally were not allowed to leave your room, not allowed to do pretty much anything else. So you kind of by default were like, well, screw it. I'm just going to become the most perfect version of me as a player I can be. Yeah, um, definitely. Going into that year, I mean, everybody was in the same boat that year. Um, it was definitely a weird year. Um, but like you said, we, we did have a lot of time. Like, we weren't allowed to go out, really, and even just go out of our, you know, apartments unless it was going to the rink. So um, I think it was a lot of, you know, go to the rink, working on your game, and then, you know, going back. And everybody was on different times, so there'd be games on or something. And, I mean, that was all you really could do is either just watch, you know, other NHL games or you're – basically just hang out in your room. So uh, you kind of, you know, really learned a lot that year and, and focused a lot on, you know, just your game and yourself. And um, obviously for me, that was my first year. So uh, I learned a lot that year and, and made sure I, you know, grasped everything that was coming my way and, um, you know, just tried to improve myself as much as I could. Yeah, and then you mentioned uh, watching other NHL games. When you watch NHL games, you just watch them as a fan, and you pick like a certain defenseman that you like on each team to kind of watch to analyze to go, okay, if I implement that, that's going to help me as well. Like, what what side of the equation are you kind of on while watching? Or is it kind of both for you, and depends on the game you're watching? Yeah, um, well, I mean, it kind of it kind of goes both ways. I mean, I always if there's just a random game on that you know I wouldn't typically watch, like the team or something. I'll throw it on, but then I'll see somebody that catches my eye and I'll be like, what is, what is he doing? Or um, what, what is he doing out there? That's, you know, catching my eye that made me catch, you know, and I'll watch, you know, what he does breaking out, what he does at the neutral zone and why he's so efficient and why, you know, he made me, you know, at first glance be like, wow, he's, he's doing good. So um, I think it's kind of both what you mentioned, uh, obviously watching as a fan, because I love the game, but um, also, you know, taking bits and pieces from the guys that, um, you know, are at the highest level. So. Yeah, it makes sense. And then you said coming from your first season now into this season, of course, unfortunately, you were a little banged up at the beginning, but working through your injuries, but also coming back from that, it seemed like you were pretty ready when you came back because, I mean, you always were a good skater on the defensive end, but typically on that long of a layoff, skating is the last thing to come back, where I thought after a few games watching every Phantoms game, some up there, some on AHL, it kind of came back quickly for you. Can you speak to like what you did in preparation to be able to come back as quickly as you did and have as good of a, I believe it was 56, 65 game this year that you were able to be one of, again, the better right-handed defensive defenseman on the team and around the, the league when you came back. What speaks to the preparation that goes into that being only 22 and able to do that after an injury that usually would affect more guys for a little bit longer and not have three, four games, and then you're kind of hitting the ground running again? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that, that speaks to our training staff. Um, you know, they really worked on my injuries both years, um, you know, made sure that I was getting the right stuff I needed and getting it every day. And, and whether it, maybe I came in a little bit more sore, they'd work on a little extra. Um, and then obviously when it got close to time to come back to, you know, game, game ready, um, like our, 
our conditioning skates and everything that I had to do before I was able to, you know, be cleared uh, were very intense. Um, you know, they, they did their best they could to, uh, you know, simulate a game. So I was kind of, you know, I was pretty, I was working pretty hard out there and, and you know, they were putting in a lot of, uh, you know, skating reps and everything to get your uh, cardio back up. So, I mean, I think it's just a big, big, uh, you know, tip in their cap to them. So uh, they did a great job. Yeah. And then I think coming into the wrapping point of the interview, what, what is your thoughts on you played now 86 games in the AHL? Uh, you would obviously, depending on the amount of games you play, you should definitely hit that century mark. But you, of course, don't really want to hit that century mark because you would prefer to make the Flyers roster. In your mind, what are your chances being realistic in your head that you have to make it? And what are the things you really worked on this offseason, knowing you're one of those cusp players to make it after now being at the 86 game threshold in the AHL? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my goal has always been, you know, to make the Flyers and or at least, you know, get up there midseason or whatever and, and stick. And that's the main thing is what you want to do is you want to stay. And um, so, you know, this offseason, I'm really working on, you know, getting bigger, stronger and, you know, just keeping that game what they want, you know, getting pucks out, defending our goalie, you know, getting shots through and in the zone and, you know, just playing good, solid RD. And, um, you know, I'm definitely working on putting on some size this summer and, and speed and power. And, um, yeah, I'm just – I'm really looking forward to, you know, this year, and I feel like it will be a great year. And then the last thing I kind of had wrapping up, you guys have a few young defensemen, of course, Ronnie Adder, uh, Cam Yorks have already seen a little bit of – uh, as well as others have seen a little bit of NHL time. But do you think it's very beneficial? Because from an outside-in perspective, it seems like it's very beneficial kind of having everybody already work with each other in the minors and coming up kind of around the same time, making the NHL at the same time, because you're both there, one, know each other in the locker room to help each other out, inner locker room stuff that none of us media know about, and two, on the ice because you have that chemistry already. Is that as beneficial as it seems from the outside on the inside? Definitely, definitely. Um you know, that's just with everybody, you know, even if, you know, most of the guys are, you know, great, great guys. And I should say all of them. I mean, most of them, I, I've only talked to a couple, but, um, you know, uh, a lot of the guys, you know, are super welcoming. Um, you know, they they know what you're going through. They've been there before. So um, whether you are tight with them or not, um, you know, if you do get that call up or, or vice versa and someone's down with you and they just got there, uh, you know, they make it easy, you know, to just walk right in and, and feel confident. And, you know, if they, if you need any help, they'll, they'll be right there to help you. And, um, and then, yeah, obviously like, um, uh, for, for Cam, I played with him a lot last year. So, um, you know, the chemistry is there and, and I enjoy playing with him. So if that ever happened again, you know, that's obviously that helps a lot, um, uh, you know, knowing how they play and how they, you know, skate and everything like that. So, um, that part is huge, but, um, for the other part, you know, most of the guys are, are so friendly and, and so, you know, welcoming and uh, they just make it easy if that, if stuff like that ever happens. So. Gotcha. Well, Wyatt, I really appreciate you uh, joining. I uh, hope to get some other, I know I asked Bob for a max next because it would be cool since he came from the Reading who I cover with you guys yeah. all the way up, but I really appreciate you joining. It was a pleasure talking to you. Um, I know Sam will be a little jealous. Uh, you're one of her favorite <laughs> people, but uh it was a pleasure talking to you. You can follow us here at Sports Fanatic News, everybody. That's a hockey fan. We'll cover the entire league. We're doing uh, off-season reports on top prospects and key players that follow on every team now. And then I've done a million videos on the Flyers with different people lately. And now have a Phantoms video we're getting out with Wyatt here, who hopefully becomes a Flyers video in the short doing, as we hope you have a good chance to make the Flyers this season. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe and enjoy the hockey. The Stanley Cup is upon us starting tomorrow between the Bolts for a third straight season and the Colorado Avalanche. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.